right. Good morning, everyone. How are you doing on this Friday? Uh, just doing a quick refresher again, just making sure everything shows up on your guys' end. This is Paint with Lovejoy. And today's painting, we do not have a traceable, so we're going to be kind of building it from scratch. All right, there we go. And we are practicing clouds today. And I say practicing because I am more of a wildlife painter and clouds are not my specialty. So if we look at it as practice, it takes away some of the stress. All right, so a little bit of what you're looking at. I am reusing what we call a repurposed, regessoed canvas. Um, so you can see the different texture on here. And there is a link in the description box below if you would like to reuse some of your canvases. It, <laughs> excuse me, it does have, you know, kind of this texture. So it's good for a lot of practice pieces. So that way you're not purchasing a lot of canvases. But if you are making a gift for somebody, please use a fresh canvas so that way you don't have the texture on here. So just a little bit about what you're looking at on the screen. And as you have questions today, please feel free to leave them in the chat and I will address them as I am talking about or as I am painting. And like I said today, um, clouds are a bit of a practice for me. So I'm going to show you my method for making clouds. Um, I searched YouTube last night. There are so many artists out there making fabulous clouds with watercolors, oils, palette knife. Um, so the method that I'm going to show you today is just one of many, many ways to paint clouds. So I encourage you to kind of enjoy this video, but go out there and explore and find out what other artists and other people are doing. And do that for a lot of things in the creative world, because that is how you're going to learn a lot. All right, so I am going to start with a light blue. We're going to put the whole, um, fill the whole canvas in. I will put a little bit of a ground on there and I'm referencing, I believe some clouds probably like Nebraska or Oklahoma or something to where it's really flat. So we have um, a little bit of a ground cover. If you don't want a ground and you just want full on sky and clouds, you can fill your whole thing in with that light blue paint. And I am using a bit of a larger brush. Try a few different brush strokes as you apply it full width. You can turn it sideways to create a skinnier line or slap it on there. And like I said, we're going to fill this whole space with a light blue. Then I'm going to go a little bit darker towards the top. Then I'll put the ground on and that gives our um, background a little time to dry. And then we'll put our clouds on there. All right. And if you're using student grade paint, just apply that paint pretty thick on there. And especially if you are like me using a textured, a repurposed canvas, Definitely apply that paint on there kind of thick just so it can cover up and fill in any of those little nooks and crannies or the textures, uh, little pockets that they've left. And if you have to mix your blue two or three times, don't stress about the exact same color. As you can see that I am grabbing a little bit of white and a little bit of blue and almost like making the color each time um, I go to apply it. Now for my beginner painters, as you are beginning the stages and the process of painting, uh, try not to get too frustrated as you mix your colors um, for your paint. Your brain is learning a lot each time you mix your color. So even if you're doing what I'm doing and mixing that color each time you go to grab it, your brain is learning how much white, how much blue, how much of each color. And in the beginning, it is overwhelming as your brain takes in all that information. So be kind to yourself. We are hard on ourselves for way too many things these days, so don't let painting be one of those areas. All right, so look, I see a bunch of people jumping on and chatting. Let me see. All right, awesome. So let's see, we've got uh, Neva already left a message. Hopefully she'll be able to make it back. We've got Sonia, V, Denise, V, and Anita, and Sonia. Awesome, awesome. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Oh, Wyoming, yes. All right. Nice, nice, and glad it's nice weather in New York. Awesome, awesome. All right, and we got V in Denver. Excellent. So kind of spread all over the country today. I like it. Um, and it's a fairly a pretty weather here in San Diego. We don't have any of that May gray happening right now, which is kind of nice. And I think I may go paddle boarding this afternoon. We are allowed to do solo sport activities. <laughs> um, and I know all the surfers are thrilled that the beaches are back open. All right, so we are going to make a little bit darker blue. 
and this will be a little bit of the wet on wet blending. So I'm actually just adding more blue to that mixture. And like I said, I like it going, I'm gonna have it going a little bit darker towards the top. And this color, I'm actually just slapping right on my background and then blending it into that base color. And still, as you can see, I am kind of grabbing and mixing that color each time I need it. So again, don't stress about the perfect shade and I will get it to where we have that, that pure blue. We're gonna put that towards the top. So you can't even start there. And as your background is wet and you're moving your brush um, on top of your background, use that light pressure and just kind of play with the blending. And again, your brain's taking in a lot of information as you do this. If you need to go back and make that light blue color again to mix it into it, go right ahead. Because depending on what type of paint you're using, what brand, um, your paint may be drying faster or slower than what I'm doing. Because I'm on the resurfaced canvas, my paint's actually drying pretty quick. But for the demos, that is to my benefit, so that way I can get through a couple of layers um, for you guys at home. So if you need to, you are more than welcome to pause the video at any point, let your paint dry, and then pick up the video again um, for where you left off. So at home, you get a bit more of control of your pace compared to me trying to do all this um, in a half hour, 40 minute demo. All right. And again, if you want to kind of keep those nice smooth brush strokes, you can see that I'm actually just using that full width of the canvas, but because I've got the texture on here, it is showing up. But if you can keep your brush strokes long and smooth like this, um, you'll have a kind of a nice flat, non-textured canvas. So a few things, again, just practicing and playing with the pressure of your brush each time that you paint. And I want a bit more of a contrast, so I'm actually just taking that straight blue. I want it a little bit darker up here. I'm actually going to stand up and get that on there. And again, remember, sometimes you need to stand away from your painting. So prop it up, look at it from a distance, and just assess. But you want to do everything to your blue sky now while your paint is wet. Um, before we let it dry and then move into putting the clouds on top of that. I'm actually just grabbing a little bit more white and toning down that blue. Like I said, I want it a little bit lighter as it goes towards the ground. You can add a touch of water, just a little bit to help your blending, but try not to rely on adding water to your acrylic paint to do your blending. Um, it is going to dry your paint out a lot faster. Um, I mean, it'll dry on your canvas, it'll make it dry a lot faster. And sometimes that's good, but you want to get comfortable with mixing your paint with the actual paint, not with the water. All right, so it looks pretty good. So I'm going to clean the brush off good now. That was a great grammar sentence. Sorry about that. Um, I'm cleaning the brush off well. <laughs> and then we're going to take that um, burnt sienna or uh, raw sienna and a little bit of yellow and probably just the bottom two inches, um, we're gonna put a little bit of a ground on here. If you do not wanna add that to yours, just skip this step, and then you can pick it up when we start doing the clouds. So I'm pulling some of that reddish, uh, that burnt, here we go, let's get this color correct, raw sienna. So I think today's my week just to trip over my words. I tripped over them yesterday and the day before. All right, so we're mixing that raw sienna and yellow and it's kind of making like a yellow ochre color. That is one of my favorite colors. And like I said, about two inches from the bottom. So if you start on the left-hand side, go up about two inches, make a dot. Same thing on the right-hand side, go up about two inches. Doesn't have to be perfect. Do that twice in the center. And then I'm gonna apply this pretty thick because my blue paint is still wet. And because I'm using um, student grade paint, you're gonna be able to see some of that blue underneath. So I'm just applying mine a little bit thicker. There we go. And I have always liked this kind of yellow ochre color and that blue. It's just uh, very earthy and kind of, kind of muted. It's not as such a bright, bright yellow. All right, and then while that's on there, I'm gonna grab some of my direct raw sienna slap it on there and same thing just having a few places where it's a little bit lighter a little bit darker 
And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the yellow in a moment. If you're on a stretched canvas and you're keeping this one, <clears throat> when you were doing your sky, make sure that your color goes around the edge. And then when you're doing your ground, just make sure the color goes around the bottom. If you plan on re-gessoing this, uh, don't worry about the edges because that'll just basically be wasted paint. So for our little highlight in here, I'm grabbing that chunk of yellow, slapping it on there kind of at that horizon line because I'm imagining that's the lightest spot. And then with that light pressure, just kind of squishing, pushing that yellow into that raw sienna mixture. And again, you can kind of keep that long brush stroke all the way across if that's what you were doing in your sky. All right, and I am going to go get fresh water. I will be right back. Um, but you definitely, if you've got colored water, you want to uh, clean it out and have fresh water. So I'll be right back. All right, there we go. And I forgot that I took the microphone off and I kept talking to you guys when I walked to get my water. So nice, funny on me. Okay, so let's these clouds. You do want to make sure that your background's dry and mine is. And what we're going to do, um, we're going to kind of build on that stabbing method that we've done in a few of our blending um, other demos. So you can hold your brush kind of perpendicular to the canvas and we're going to kind of be tapping it. And again, as you do that, I want you to kind of twirl the brush back and forth in your, um, in your fingers because you don't want to keep making the exact same shape or brush stroke. So if you twirl it a little bit as you make your, your marks, then it gives you a bit more uh, random brush strokes. And that's kind of what we want as we do the clouds. So actually, let me just check and see if there was any questions before I jump into that. Um, oh, awesome. We got some new people. Hi, Lacey. And then everybody else is still there. Okay, awesome. <laughs> All right, so let's see, which brush did you say I was using? Okay, so for the background, I did use a wider flat brush and I haven't used this one as much in the demos just because I'm on a smaller canvas. Um, but this one is, I believe a six or it's a three quarter and it's a flat tip compared to this one that has a curved. Um, and you can get the curved, the curved is called a filbert, and then this is called a flat or a bright. And they both can be kind of interchangeable. So if you have a curved edge one, don't feel like you have to go buy the flat one and vice versa. If you have a flat tipped brush, don't feel like you have to buy the curve. Um, they're just different ways for you to apply paint. And like I said, these two can be interchangeable. And then you definitely want to hang out with a pointy brush and that'll be for more detailed work. So. Um, a lot of times in most of these videos, you'll see that I, I really only use one, maybe two brushes. Um, I do keep it kind of simple. There are an abundance of choices of brushes and palette knives at the store. But remember in art, try to keep it simple for you. So you don't need to buy every tool. Just what's going to work for you. Okay, so as we do this again, I'm on that middle uh, flat brush or the middle filbert brush. We're going to start in the back and we're going to just going to be doing that tapping method. So these clouds are going to be kind of small. I do have a big kind of blocky cloud right here and then a few going off the edge. And when we get into more of the closer clouds, then we'll get into some light gray and do shading. Because again, as you're looking at a cloud, you may think it's just white, but as you're looking at that photograph, do you see a super light gray? Do you see a little bit darker light gray? You know, start us uh, being able to assert the different colors, let alone once you start getting into clouds um, with sunset colors in them. That's a whole different ball game. So I figured I'd just keep it simple for today. All right. So basically just using the straight white paint, the direct white paint. We're going to get our shapes on here and then we'll put some layers on top of it for shading. And if you need to, you can use this brush. Same method same um, application that we'll use for the larger brush. So like I said, we're starting at the back. And again, we're imagining that this horizon line so far back there, we do have these kind of like little flat shelves of clouds. And these are pretty tiny. Some of these are going to overlap. And again, um, kind of twirl that brush just a little bit, but I am trying to keep these a little bit more linear. Um, 
so that way they're a little bit more flat and then as they move forward as we get into the foreground then that cloud's going to be pretty big up there and we do have some of these shooting off the edge of the canvas and by having some of your image go off the canvas that helps the viewer imagine that there's so much more happening outside of the canvas than what you captured and it just adds more intrigue to your particular painting so as i go up the canvas these little uh, blobs and sometimes it's easier just think about it as a blob instead of a cloud because sometimes when we think about what the actual subject matter is then we start painting what we think it looks like instead of what it actually looks like and when you get more into painting from photo reference, that becomes a very important concept. And half of art is learning to train your brain to see things in a new way and to do new things. And again, as you're working at home, just kind of observe the place and the slight abstract shape that I'm making with these and do your best just to mimic that. It does not have to be perfect. And a lot like impressionistic paintings, these are gonna look better from further away. They may look kind of weird from up close. All right, so we've got kind of our larger cloud starting to shape here. We're gonna have another big one hang out here and then we're starting to get into the larger ones. And like I said, right now, I'm just getting that base shape on there. And then we're gonna be putting some shadows on top of it. Now, if your blue paint is still a little bit wet and you've got some of that blue being picked up, um, maybe use a little less pressure, but also don't freak out. You can even turn it sideways like this because my blue is being picked up. Um, but don't freak out because even a lot of our clouds would have that blue sky color reflected into their shadows. So for this one, and likely it's going to happen up here too, I'm just going to work that into... Um, the shadows. And if you have anything that's frustrated you or pissed you off, the stabbing method is highly therapeutic for it. And I did like it when I would drive across the country at a few different points in my life and I'd come to these big open spaces and you just have these just shelves of clouds just shooting down the sky all the way to the horizon line and I just I thought it looked so awesome so epic. And then living in California we do get some good uh, cloud coverage here and then I lived in Arizona and I would actually say Arizona sunsets um are actually a little cooler than california sunsets so sorry hardcore californians for california i would actually say the best sunsets are february and march when it's not really tourist season here and when it's a little bit crisper and we don't have the marine layer in the summer we have the marine layer that hangs out right above the horizon line um, usually hangs out more along the coastline so you don't obviously don't see it as much inland um, but it'll just eat up the sun at the end sometimes, but it'll make for great colors. All right, so here, even as I do this, my blue paint is still wet, so it's just kind of picking up into it. Um, I'm just going to work that into the, the design. And as we put our uh, other layers on there, I'm going to blob that white paint on there pretty, pretty uh, thick. All right, so just going through fine-tuning a few of the shapes and then we're gonna make some gray some light gray and do the exact same application and just keep applying and I'm gonna step up and take a look on the phone see how it's looking from that distance all right let's see Okay, so not bad. So even with this part right here, with some of that blue shining through, it's still actually lending um, to the effect that we need. I still need this part right here in the center. This is going to be pretty uh, bright white. So I'll be um, intensifying that. There'll be a few places on here that's pretty bright white. And as we imagine, as we're looking down the horizon line, um, 
a lot of times I would drive and even on the reference photo that I'm looking at, it's almost as if there was like a glass shelf right underneath each of the clouds. So there's going to be a little bit of a shadow area here, a little bit of a shadow area here. So on the bottom part, the underneath side of each of these clouds is where the shadow element um, that we're going to be adding is going to be. So I'm going to add some more white paint to my plate. And let me check and see if there's any other questions. Okay, cool. All right. And again, at home, you can let your paint fully dry. That's going to make it a little bit easier for you. And as I'm working on these down here, I am going to move into the pointy brush and then I'll go back up to the bigger brush as we get into the larger clouds. So I'm pulling a touch of that white aside, tiny amount of black. And a lot of times I like to put the what was on my brush to the edge and then we're going to mix that in and then you can always pull that in a little bit more as needed all right so i'm going to make mine a touch darker just so it shows up a little bit easier for you guys at home um, on the video but we are going for about a light gray and again keep in mind that you are a magician as you paint this at home you have to create this illusion um, of a 3D space on a flat 2D surface. All right, so this one, starting back again at that horizon line, you can hold that brush kind of perpendicular and literally at the bottom of these little cloud formations, and I'm not making a full on straight line, but I am kind of just giving it a little bit of weight on the bottom of each of these clouds. And I will jump up in a minute on the phone and see if I can zoom in so you guys can see it a little bit easier. So give me just a moment. And again, I'm keeping just kind of that light pressure and it may feel kind of weird right now. We're gonna um, give this a little time to dry and then we'll put white on top of it. So again, we're creating that illusion of depth by adding our shadow structure. And sometimes with our shadow structure, we do have to go almost too dark and then come back and add our lights and then maybe you have to go back and add your darks. So that's why I say it's always kind of a back and forth with the painting process. And the more that you paint, the more you learn about how you're looking at stuff, um, where you focus on, because you may focus on something and somebody else focuses on something totally different. And that's part of the way of the world. All right, so again, as I move up in here into the larger clouds, I'm still keeping with that little stabbing method but I'm also not quite perpendicular. I'm at about a 45 degree angle. Um, just because my paint is wet, um, I'm trying not to pick up more of that blue. And even as we get into these larger clouds, some of our shadows start kind of moving up. Um, Cause again, they have just this great volume. And when we put the more of the pure white on top of that, it's gonna push that back and make the white uh, pop forward. So to create that illusion by putting the darker space, kind of this shadowy gray next to a pure white, it makes the shadowy gray push back and it makes the pure white pop forward. Even kind of what you can see in this cloud right here, this part pops forward to where this part gets pushed back. And even that um, contrast between that pure white right here and even that blue background. So I know it can be a lot of information Again, just be kind to yourself as you're learning to look at things in a new manner. And if you go out today and you're looking at clouds, try to notice, can you see the shadows in the clouds? Or that actually make a good song title. Shadows in the clouds. If anybody is a musician that you hear that, just you know, send me a little finder's fee or purchase some artwork or something. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to make a little bit more and I'm going to go, let's see, we're going to add it on this one. This one is pretty white, but I need to get that um, blue toned down. So I'm still going to stick with that gray. And basically, I'm just trying to get it to cover up so we don't have as much blue. And by doing that, um, basically I'm just applying thicker paint um, every two brush strokes, just grabbing more paint and I'm not using as much pressure because more of the pressure is going to bring that blue from underneath. Um, 
into my mixture. And again, I'm only having to deal with this because I'm painting on wet paint. If you wait at home for yours to dry, you will have less frustration. All right, so let's take another look. Not bad. Okay, so now we're gonna move it back into the white. I'm gonna go pretty heavy handed on it. And I won't hold my brush perpendicular. It's gonna be at that 45 degree angle. Again, just so I can apply this on kind of thick. And as you guys are painting at home, please send me pictures of what you paint, what your clouds look like. And if you paint clouds again, send me another picture. Um, I do like to see the evolution of what you guys do. And I like seeing, you know, where you're learning stuff. All right, so I'm literally just grabbing that white paint kind of thick, adding that same thing. And basically by adding this thicker, I want that white to be more opaque because this is kind of my front and center cloud. But because I am using student grade paint, this will flatten out. This is not going to keep that same texture. And I am overlapping a few of the spaces um, with that gray. So that again, that way we have that contrast with that gray next to the white. And even if it picks up some of that gray and is diffusing and it's maybe it's a light gray instead of a white, that's okay. Because again, you're just playing with all these different colors to create this illusion of this fluffy cotton ball, cotton candy looking thing in the sky. And if you need to, wipe off excess paint on your brush as needed. And then when you come down to your smaller little clouds down here, that less pressure, still having some of that gray kind of shine through. And again, this was a very crude and, um, can't think of the, the verb that I'm thinking of right now. Um, but it was a rather crude way that we applied all the paint to make our clouds today. So like I said earlier, please check out other options of how people make clouds. Try what works for them. Maybe it's a combo of something I'm doing, something somebody else is doing. But find your own groove for painting. And by finding your own groove, that means trying a bunch of different aspects, even if it, you find that it's scary. Um, and in the art world, if you find that it's scary, um, that's generally something that you need to try in the art world. In life, please be safe. Don't, no harm to yourself or others. Um, but in the art world, when we find it scary, that's your subconscious going, hey, give it a try. Because when you try something that you find scary and then you do it successfully, then that leans over to other areas of your life going, hey, I can do that. I can give it a try. Right. Oh, let me go a little thicker on here. Um, you can do this application with a sponge. Um, so same thing where you're just kind of tapping it on there and it creates this texture. You could use um, a wadded up paper towel and just uh, basically again, anything to kind of create this little stabbing method um, and apply your paint to it. You could even use your fingers and finger paint. Whoops. This one is going to be interesting how it dries. Okay, so not too bad. We are we do have a certain sense of depth. I still want this one to be a little bit whiter, so I might let it dry and then add more paint to it later. Um, and then if you needed to, if you were looking at a photo reference and maybe there's a little bit of a darker gray here, maybe there's just a few spots of darker gray, 
Um, again, you're just discerning and learning to look at your value scale and the different colors that you recognize in the photo you may be referencing. I'm going to make a few just darker gray areas. And then even after you add your darkers, then you go back and add some white. And you probably would go through quite a bit of white when you do this, so. So I think on this one, I'm definitely going to let it dry. I'll do one more round of white so it's a bit more opaque um, and solid. But feel free to play with this. And like I said, check out YouTube. Um, just type in how to paint clouds. Like I said, there's so many people doing it in so many different methods that maybe you'll find your combo. Maybe you'll find a nice method that you like. But just keep having fun and being creative. All right, so not bad for today. Um, I did get, I think, the next six traceables ready, so I'm going to upload those for tomorrow's painting and the next uh, paintings for the weekend and next week. But please feel free to leave suggestions for what you want painted in the future. Check out my online school, Paint with Lovejoy, with my signature Paint Your Pet class, and that is geared towards first-time and beginner painters, uh, painting from your own photograph and learning about your value scale as well as tons of other bundles. I'm looking at making um, uh, anytime art camp uh, bundles. So that way you do one painting on Monday, do another painting on Tuesday, um, and that will be good for all ages. So if you've got kids or you need something to do this summer, check those out. And yeah, so I think that takes care of it. Oh, make sure you like the video, hit the subscribe button so you can check out the other demos. Um, I think I'm close to 60 demos so far. We've been doing this for about two months and you can go find the other demos on the main portion of my page and keep on painting. So, all right. And, oh, let's see. Um, ooh, for future tutorials. Yes, we'll have to get the butterfly and the tree in there and the island. Awesome, I'll add those to the list. So thank you. Um, I hope everybody has a great day. I will catch you tomorrow or Sunday or the day after that. But have a great Friday and take care. Cheers.